The Indian River Lagoon is in trouble. The water quality has been deteriorating for years and the wildlife is in decline. We've had really serious events like a fish kill in the northern part of the lagoon and a massive toxic algae bloom in the southern part of the lagoon that was so large it could be seen by satellite and so toxic that it actually caused an increase in admissions at Martin Memorial Hospital related to the bloom. These are things that are having a serious impact on our quality of life in, in this region. We know it's affecting businesses, especially water-based businesses, and it's starting to affect waterfront real estate values. But this issue of human health is something I think we need to be paying a lot more attention to because it has long-term implications for all of us that have made our homes here. One of the concerns is a toxin named microcystin. It was produced by that blue-green algae that occurred in the St. Lucie estuary last summer. Microcystin is something that we need to be paying a lot of attention to because there's growing evidence that there is a linkage between microcystin and liver cancer. Uh, there was a paper that came out um, just a couple years ago where they did a correlation analysis between uh, cyanobacterial blooms, which is the same thing as blue-green algae, nationwide, and uh, non-alcoholic related liver disease. And there were a few places that popped out. Unfortunately, one of those bright red spots on the map was right here. It was around the Indian River Lagoon and around Lake Okeechobee. So we already have evidence that this may be causing concerns. Another one is a, a different type of cyanotoxin that is related to neurodegenerative diseases and has been linked to Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and Lou Gehrig's disease. These things are getting into our food web in a variety of different ways. Uh, first of all, if you're right next to a bloom, it can be aerosolized. You can actually be breathing it in with the air you're breathing. Um, but even if you're not right next to the bloom, you can be picking it up either through your water supply or your food supply. One of the things that ORCA has discovered, because we've been able to put our Kilroys in the canal systems, is that there are what we call hidden algae blooms going on out there. They're hidden in the sense that they're not big enough that you're seeing that green slime, but you're seeing uh, on the sensors that there is a blue-green algae bloom going on. Well, the reason that's of concern is that water is being used to irrigate our food crops. And it has been shown that food crops can take up these toxins. So it's something that we need to be paying more attention to. It's also something that farmers might want to be aware of because it's also been shown that these toxins can be impacting the microbes in the soil. And so it could be affecting their crop yields. I think it's worthwhile for us to start looking at these things a lot more seriously. It seems like we're starting to see an increase in blue-green algae blooms worldwide, uh, and there are a number of reasons why that might be occurring, um, but we need to look at what those implications are for um, those of us living near the water.